A plant grows by adding parts. Special growth zones called meristems arise in the embryo within the seed. After the seed germinates, these meristems are where the roots and shoots elongate. The meristems are also where new structures, like leaves and later flowers, are added. Humans grow by enlarging their bodies. All the parts are created early in development and each get bigger with growth. Some animals grow more like plants than like humans, like siphonophores, beautiful gelatinous animals that swim in the open ocean. They get bigger in a very different way than a human does. It too starts out as a fertilized egg that grows into an embryo that makes a body. But this body has growth zones. The original body elongates at these growth zones, forming a very long stem that can reach more than 100 feet in some species. The growth zones also serve another purpose, though. They produce new bodies. These bodies remain attached to the stem and are specialized for particular tasks, such as swimming, feeding and digestion, and sexual reproduction. A mature siphonophore is a colony made up of many of these genetically identical, specialized bodies. We know they are whole bodies rather than reiterated organs, like in plants, because they each have many of the structures found in their solitary relatives, such as sea anemones and medusa jellyfish. The siphonophore growth zone is a remarkable structure. The budding process that produces new bodies is highly regular and results in the same pattern of specialized bodies being repeated over and over again. Each reiterated sequence of bodies starts out as a single bud. It enlarges, and eventually most of it will become the feeding body. It gets bumpy on one side, though, and each of these bumps becomes a bud that grows into another type of body, called a palpin. At first, the feeding body and its associated palpins are joined to the stem by a shared stalk, like a cluster of grapes. But as they mature, the stalk gets wider and flatter until all the feeding bodies and palpins are attached to the stem individually. As they enlarge and are carried away from the growth zone, other bodies that produce either eggs or sperm arise on the stem at the base of the palpins. They appear in a very regular alternating pattern. One palpin will have males to the right and females to the left. The next palpin will have females to the right and males to the left, and so on in an alternating sequence. Siphonophore structure and development gives us a peek at a very different way to make a complex organism without even needing to leave our own planet to find independent origins of life. We humans become big complex organisms by growing our single body and specializing different parts within it for different tasks. Siphonophores become big complex organisms by making lots of little bodies and specializing each of them for a particular task. But both have evolved division of labor. And these parallels, whether the specialization is within a body or between bodies, are striking even though siphonophores, humans, and other organisms got there in very different ways.